Hi everyone, my name is Renee Long, one of the social media specialists and webinar co coordinators here at the American College of Healthcare Sciences. And joining me today behind the scenes for all our technical needs is Dominic Aiello, the other social media specialist and webinar coordinator here at ACHS. And today we'll be hosting a webinar on pediatric homeopathy with expert homeopath Miranda Castro. Miranda is a British homeopath who has been practicing home homeopathy for more than 30 years. She's the author of the best-selling book, The Complete Homeopathy Handbook, and the much-loved Homeopathy for Pregnancy, Birth, and Your Baby's First Years. And you can find both of these books at our Apothecary Shop online store or in our camp at our campus here in Portland. And you can also find out more about Miranda on her website at www.mirandacastro.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, Miranda, and welcome everybody to the webinar. Uh, just a few house housekeeping items before we get started. You may have noticed that your line has been muted and we are recording today's webinar and this helps us um, ensure that we can clearly hear our presenter. You'll also notice that you have a control panel at the right hand side of your screen. If you have a question you would like to ask Miranda for the Q&A at the end of the webinar, you can go ahead and type it in the questions box there. And we will have a 10 minute Q&A period at the end of the webinar. So if you have questions as we go, go ahead and type them into the questions box at the bottom of your control panel and Miranda will do her best to get to your questions. Um, but if you have further questions that require a bit more research, you can feel free to follow up with her, our presenter directly. And I believe she will be putting her email address up on the screen in a little bit. Um, she is happy to respond to all of your questions, but please be sure to give her a little bit of time to get back to you. And now I'll go ahead and turn the webinar over to our presenter who will give a brief introduction and then begin her lecture. Welcome, Miranda. You should now have control of the webinar. Okay. Thanks so much, Renee. Thanks so much for, to the um, ACHS for, your, for inviting me to speak. It's um, lovely to be here. And so I'm just going to get just a tiny bit more about me. I've used homeopathic medicines my whole life. As a child, our family doctor was an osteopath and a naturopath who used the healing power of nutrition. You know, of, um, we used fasting and um, plant medicine with herbs and, and also supplements and homeopathic medicines. So as a grown-up, <laughs> when I left home, I used homeopathy for acute illnesses. I was a home prescriber for many years. And as a mother, I've used, I used homeopathy for all of my own child's complaints. So I actually trained as a homeopath. Um, I went to, into homeopathy school when he was two years old. Um, I had trained as an acupuncturist, but I fell out with it when I couldn't help him when he got sick. And I ended up doing homeopathy because it is, I, it's, empowering. I can teach people to help themselves. I can train, um, you, you know, all kinds of people in how to do basic homeopathy at home, in their consulting rooms, as an adjunct to whatever other therapists they're doing. And that's what we're going to um, look at today in this little webinar. So as a practitioner, I've been in practice for over 30 years and worked with thousands of children of all ages and for all problems. I love the kids. And this little pic is of Daniel when he was just three, four years old in a reflective um, mood. It's very sweet. So today you'll learn what homeopathy is and what it isn't. I'm, cover, I'm going to cover the basic principles um, and we'll skirt a little bit around the homeopathic view of health and disease. It's a bit different to other therapies. Um, I'm going to show how to understand the many homeopathic products now available at your local store because Walmart, well, not Walmart, or maybe Walmart, Walgreen and CVS now carry homeopathic medicines. Your local whole food store, of course, does have a lot of shelves and, um, you know, single remedies, combination remedies, creams have a lot of stuff. And also the vitamin shops. I'm going to cover 10 homeopathic medicines that are, um, 
frequently used for a handful of common children's complaints. So my hope is that you'll go away from this webinar knowing how to use a ha this handful of remedies. Boom, you'll be able to just go straight out there, buy them and use them with confidence and safely, how to do it safely with confidence. So let's start out. What is homeopathy? Basically, it's an elegant system. It's an energy medicine by any other name. is. I sometimes say it's like acupuncture without needles. You know, it's in a bottle. They're tablets. And um, it's a form of healing that harnesses the innate power for healing that resides within us all. So it stimulates your body to heal itself. It's one of the fastest growing and the most badly understood of all the complementary and alternative modalities. But homeopathic medicines are safe, they're non-toxic, they're FDA approved and available, like I said, everywhere. So it deserves better understanding. And the stumbling block is this word energy, the energetic component makes it hard for people to grasp. It's a complete healing system, so treats first aid, which accidents, injuries, any kind of acute complaint, chronic diseases, the long-term or reoccurring complaints, and we actually don't discriminate between mental, emotional, and physical complaints. We take them all equally as seriously as a, you know, and um, as a whole. We treat all living beings as an acupuncturist with the training that I did. I wasn't allowed to treat children um, or pregnant women. And um, with homeopathy, there's no, there are no exclusions. So people who, you know, with disabilities or living animals, um, respond really well to homeopathy. There's a, a new specialty in homeopathy that uh, agricultural homeopathy that treats plants. I haven't looked into that, although goodness knows my garden could do some with some help in that regard. <laughs> I'm in Florida and here we struggle with the insects, you know, because they thrive in this humid environment. Um, so homeopathy has a, a, co a coherent set of principles that haven't changed in the 200 years that it has been around. Here they are, the basic principles, treating like with like, that's the law of similars if you like. Um, the, uh, I, I, I'm, the, here's a simple list, I'm going to go into each one in a tiny bit more depth. The minimum dose is the energetic component of, um, of the practice. The single remedy, one remedy at a time. Um, treating the whole person. Uh, we, we, don't, we tend not to treat single symptoms. Um, that is, uh, with homeopathic remedies, is doomed for failure. The more of the whole person you take into account, the better the healing effect of the medicine you choose. Susceptibility, we all come into the world with our slates well written on, you know, we have an inheritance. And homeopaths take that inheritance into account very seriously with constitutional treatment. And we, our remedies, the, the, the chronic complaints, remedies for chronic complaints, take these inherited weaknesses into account. The vital force is the energetic component of the person, of the living being that we treat. We are not just our physical bodies. There's an energetic component that enlivens us, if you like, and um, the acupuncturists call chi, and um, the Indians call prana. So, like curing like, the law of similars. This, states basically that any substance that can make you ill, I mean any substance, toxic or not, anything that can cause symptoms in a healthy person is capable of healing similar symptoms 
um, or a similar set of symptoms in a sick person. So this is the law of similars. This is, um, and homeopaths have taken this to a whole new level by adding the minimum dose. So these two laws act in, operate in tandem, if you like. Homeopathic medicines are diluted by method that releases their healing potential. We call this potentizing. And they are diluted beyond the point where there's anything at a molecular level in them. That's beyond Avogadro's number. And we have observed that a substance that is diluted becomes stronger only if the dilutant, the liquid, is vigorously pounded with each dilution. So the more it's diluted and pounded, the stronger it becomes. Simple dilution, if you simply stir and dilute, stir and dilute, this, the medicine becomes inactive, in, you know, pretty quickly actually. But if it's pounded vigorously in between each di dilution, it becomes stronger. This is a sort of stumbling block, this for the um, scientific mind. People, you know, just have to get, uh, either get a, see it to believe it with their own eyes, or they have to sus suspend their own disbelief in order to try it. So homeopathy uh, comes under attacks periodically from by pretty much by the skeptics. There's a group of them on the internet who believe, and I use this word very carefully, believe that homeopathy is quackery. But the truth is, um, in, in 2000, it must be way over uh, 500 million homeopathic sales in this country. Uh, are really, people love it. People use it. Home prescribers use it. Doctors use it. Naturopaths use it. And homeopathic medicines, they're, they're manufactured in licensed facilities by pharmacists. You know, they're not, they're not funny little things. They're a big deal. Um, and here is all about the numbers in brief. The number um, after the remedy name on a bottle, the number denotes the strength of the medicine. And this, these numbers we call potencies. So the lower the number, the gentler the remedy. A 6X or a 6C or 12X, these are 12C, these are all lower potencies. The higher the number, the stronger the remedy. 30C is the highest of the low potencies, 200. Is, so now I, I hear you asking yourself, you're confused, what are the numbers? And here is what they mean in um, a little bit more detail. The X, you'll see here, chamomilla 6X, Annika, 30x. And this denotes a decimal scale of dilution. The process um, is this. One drop or one part of the tincture is added to nine parts of ethanol alcohol or distilled water and shaken vigorously. That is called a 1x. One drop of the 1x is taken out and diluted repeatedly serial dilution six times with a vigorous shaking in between each dilution. This is a 6X. So chamomilla 6X is chamomile, the flower, the herb, that has been um, the, a tincture um, that has been made, a herbal tincture made in alcohol. One part of that has been added to nine parts alcohol, shaken vigorously, and that process has been repeated six times. This is a 6x dilution. The, the liquid at the end, that alcohol, a few drops, are dropped into the bottle in order to medicate a bottle of saccharum lactose tablets made from the sugar of milk. 
This is Arnica 30x. It's been diluted one, one in ten, basically, thirty times. And these are these are the typical kind of bottles that you'll see on the shelf or on on the internet. When you see a six C here, six C after the number, a C means it's been diluted one in a hundred. So one drop or one part of the tincture, aconite, here's um, another plant medicine, has been added to 99 drops of alcohol or water and pounded. So the 6C has been diluted one in a hundred six times. 30C, one in a hundred 30 times. This is a tremendously dilute um, but energized, the pounding energizes. And there is research now, I've put a link to the research in this webinar that shows that the Japanese researchers found that water, a substance that has been um, vigorously shaken in water and diluted repeatedly, water actually carries the memory of that substance. Now, they weren't, they didn't have any investment in homeopathy. They probably didn't even know about homeopathy. Um, they were, their research had a different um, point. Um, but of course, it was incredibly interesting to us. So, single remedies. They're tested one at a time, and ideally, they should be selected and administered one at a time. Combination remedies, the ones that you see on the shelf in the whole food shop, jet lag remedy, this, that, and the other remedy, they seek to solve the problem of the single remedy. But the remedies are rarely intelligently chosen. That is to say, the people who are formulating these combinations are not taking the remedy relationships into account and they, they're not taking the pathology into account sometimes also. So joint creams uh, often don't have a healing ingredient for ligaments, damaged ligaments, which is the primary problem for rehab of an injured joint. We test our medicines on healthy people, verify the symptoms on sick human beings presenting with a similar symptom complex. You know, it's homeopathy works well alongside all other therapies. Homeopathic medicines do not interact badly. They're working in a different way. It's rather like using acupuncture and um, conventional medicine. You, the two work together. You don't need to believe in it to work. It works brilliantly on animals and babies and people who are sleeping or even unconscious. Uh, I've had occasion to work with um, people in comas. We make our medicines from a wide range of sources including plants, minerals, animal byproducts including insects, apis is made from um, bees, one bee makes enough medicine for thousands and thousands of bottles of um, homeopathic medicine. So an apis is the number one remedy for anaphylaxis. It'll, um, it saves lives, literally. Imponderables, we've um, captured sunlight and all kinds of odd um, substances <laughs> in inverted commas um, that have um, been found to have amazing healing properties for all kinds of complaints. So here you'll see, here's a home prescriber's kit, a 50 remedy kit. Most home prescribers use, you know, on average 10 to 20, 50 remedies, maybe more. And here's a practitioner's kit from Hahnemann Labs. Most practitioners use in the range of one, 200, 500 remedies, but actually we have over 3,500 in our Materia Medica. It's impressive. Hard to remember all that information, so we have um, computer programs that help us. We treat the whole person and 
take everything into account. We're kind of, um, you know, symptom vultures, if you like. And the best remedy always is the one that matches the whole symptom picture of a whole person. I've, I mentioned this susceptibility takes your inheritance into account your inheritance modified by your environment. So this is the degree to which you are vulnerable to outside influences or stresses. Um, as you know, not everyone will get sick, fall ill during a flu epidemic or even Ebola. Those, and those who do, we, we see as having a weak or weakened constitution and those who do not have a stronger constitution are not as susceptible. It's an important part of how we evaluate um, treatment as people um, are having treatment for chronic diseases. They should become less susceptible to acute diseases as they progress. The vital force, it's our energetic component, and we measure health as more than an absence of symptoms or disease. We use the vital force, how it's responding in the world to um, gauge whether people are more flexible, have more freedom to express themselves emotionally, mentally, physically. Um, whether there's an increased sense of wellness, of well-being, whether they feel better in themselves, whether, whether they can withstand their normal stresses better, and um, whether they're you know, less sick overall. <laughs>